and welcome to the Art Discourse, a conversation between Kyle and I and you, the viewer. We have a collection of questions that have been sent in to us over the years, and we're going to look at them and begin a discussion around them. Why don't we answer our first question? There you go. Thank you. What is the best way to fund your practice? Hmm, we're starting easy. Starting with a simple one. Not quite. Not, not complex at all. <laughs> what is the, the best way? The best way to fund your practice? I think that's what it said. Best way. Hmm. I think we can take the word best out and we can just say what are ways to fund your art practice. Yeah, I think that's probably a better choice because best is different for every individual and every individual practice. What's best for me might not be best for everybody. Agreed. So why don't we perhaps cover three different ways to fund your practice that Chris and I use? Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Um, I think that the first one is probably selling art online. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we search out grants. Yes. And I would say doing like collaborative, um, like art events is probably the third. Community arts. Yeah, or murals. If we can like put community arts and murals in together. Yeah, those that's things probably, work, yeah. probably that those are the top three, I would say. So why don't we start with uh, selling art online? It seems to be like a pretty relevant topic given today's pandemic and it seems to be kind of where a lot of artists are being kind of pushed to mm -hmm. utilize that platform, right? Big time, yeah. We use WordPress for our website and within WordPress we use a plugin called WooCommerce and WooCommerce is our e-commerce management system. It is our inventorying system. It is how we price work. It is what communicates through WordPress and to the client to create those online shopping carts that you can purchase artwork and it gets to your door. Yep. Uh, we've used Etsy for a little while, but found that Etsy was not necessarily the best place for our, our art. It was also just like time consuming to constantly be updating. I don't know if Etsy's changed now. It might no, have. that was about circa 2010 to 13 or so that we were yeah, using probably. Etsy. So with like our online sales, uh, we manage our website. So that means that we are photographing our artwork, we are uploading it, and we are assigning prices. We are also the person that writes the blurbs to it, and we sell it that way, and then we have to drive to someplace and mail it. And so everything is done by us. And it is a time-consuming process, mm -hmm. and it can be a bit discouraging because not only do you have to create this space online in which to sell it, but then you also have to end up promoting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that can be time consuming. I think it works for us because we can, like most of the work is paper goods, so it's fairly affordable to ship and easy to ship. Whereas, I, you know, maybe if I was selling paintings, I would be less inclined to sell them. Like if I was selling like large oil on canvas, I'm, I don't know, I've never shipped a large oil painting before, but I feel like it would be more challenging. So. I don't know if a large oil painting would sell very well either. Like, do you think somebody would buy like a $5,000 oil painting? I do, yeah, definitely. Off of our website? I think people buy paintings online, yeah. I just don't know how to ship them. Um, and I don't know the insurance that goes along with shipping, something like that. But, you know, small scale work, it's nice. And I think also, like the website is a good place to funnel people to and it links to Instagram. So we can have like a shop on Instagram, a shop on Facebook and a shop on our website and they're all paired together. So it makes everything very easy and seamless. So that that's definitely the one way that we make, like we fund our art practice. What was the second thing you said? Grants. The first thing was e-commerce, second one was grants. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is community arts projects. So with grants, Actually, grants have been great this year for us, which has been nice because we apply for a lot of grants and we don't always get them. That's, I would say that's the downside to the granting system is that they take a lot of work to prepare um, as anybody that's written a grant can attest. And then you send them, it t sometimes it takes upwards of you know five to six months to hear back from the, the granting officer or the grant committee or whoever is looking at it. 
to know whether or not the project is funded. And if you're waiting for that money in order to make the project happen, it can be a little stressful to, um, to wait that amount of time. Grants aren't necessarily the best place to look for, um, I guess, consistent funding. I think that like what, where we find success in granting is when we are working towards specific projects mm -hmm. or research. Um, I think that a lot of like the, I guess like grants aren't the thing that feeds you bread and butter year to year. No. They are the like, I'm doing an interesting project this year or maybe next year and they can help supplement some of those projects if that pro especially if that project is not necessarily a saleable project and is more perhaps community orientated or exploration or research focused. For example, this year I received a grant along with my co-collaborator Jenna Kush to explore printmaking and pop-up book design, so paper engineering and printmaking in combination with each other to create installations. Right now I'm just exploring that with Jenna and how to construct them as best we possibly can. Being from Ontario, Canada, we are very fortunate that we have the Ontario Arts Council and the Canada Council for the Arts as, I guess, like portals in which to access that kind of funding. Mm -hmm. I wanted to stress that like your Arts Council isn't the only location to find grants or to find that type of funding. Uh, other places that are really awesome to check are uh, the Craft Council. Craft Council, yeah. Your municipality might have grants. We've been noticing a lot more grants coming up that are um, tourism adjacent. And I think that right now, especially within like COVID and as we exit outside of the pandemic, there is going to hopefully be a lot more funding with um, kind of like a tourism catch to it mm -hmm. as a way to really like kindle the, uh, the local economies. And so you could keep an eye out for that and you might find that your art project might fit into one of those tourism grants. Yeah. For us, this year, we actually received one of these grants and it was to, it is to create a small off-site studio space that is not manned. It is essentially- Gallery a, space. Gallery space, there we go. Yeah. It is a window, it's like a 10 foot by 10 foot, all windowed um, structure. And Chrissy and I are going to build walls inside of it. And on those walls facing outward, we're going to hang artwork and it will become a little tiny picture gallery mm -hmm. that is COVID friendly, that people could come up to and there will be SKUs and barcodes that they can scan with their phones or a QR code and they can go directly to our website and purchase the print from there and it will get mailed to them at yeah. a later date. Or find out more information about yeah. what the work is. But that's an example of how we are funneling art and combining that with tourism. You can also, you know, maybe your practice is heavily in need of investment in equipment or materials. You can also talk to uh, like a business funder if that's something that you need to help support your project. If it's not necessarily so that like you can pay rent, <laughs> but you, you just need access to um, material money. If you think of um, speaking to a business funder, because you are in essence running a business as an artist, you're creating something that is being disseminated to the public in some way or another, that can be an interesting and often overlooked avenue for um, accessing funding. And what was our last thing? Our third, uh, I guess it's like suggested kind of way to access funding to sustain your practice is... Community. Yeah. Yeah. So Chrissy and I do quite a few community events every year. They happen to be pretty consistent. They are not organized by us. We are artists that are participating in somebody else's project. Mm -hmm. We do a couple of these projects and these community organized projects are usually quite well funded. They are usually something that is like a good checkbox on the granting agency and they are really quite interesting. So they could be working with like uh, the education system, where if you are going to work with the education system, you also open yourself up to education grants, not just like art grants, but education focused, right? Mm -hmm. 
I think that like with the community projects, it also for me lends itself nicely into playing around with different materials and focusing a lot on collaboration whether that collaboration is with an organization say you know we've done lots of work with critical mass in port hope where we are collaborating with the organizer on an idea that they have or you know collaborating with the organizers organizers in the community and sometimes with other artists that are participating like with department of illumination where you know, we're doing workshops in the community and we're also sort of having this like hive mind with the other artists that are participating and then we're creating our own work as well. So it has a nice kind of like, I don't know, uh, onion peel experience. So that's a nice, I think for me, that's a really nice part of the projects is that we get to play a lot and try different types of making and hear back from the community and other artists on, on what their practice is. It. Um, are. So f for me, it's kind of funding in a few different ways. It can be a nice monetary funding, but it also is an emotional fund for the arts as well, which I like. Uh, not everybody uh, necessarily follows the original path, or I guess like not the original path, that like mid 1900s path of I am an artist, I seek out gallery representation, and then I'm represented by a gallery and all my finances are, are met for until I die. I think that the, we are definitely moving away from that system. Or we are, anyway. I don't know. It, it kind of feels like in the general era of the art world, a lot of people are moving away from that. But I think it's not necessarily because they want, they necessarily want to move away from that, but it's about this like accessibility to the internet and to like, a, global, a global world. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of galleries are still very much so brick and mortar, physical spaces. And I think that there's an interesting opportunity to move to like a global, like a global position. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think that those are three good points, three good ways to think about funding your practice. And we would love to hear from you. How do you fund your practice or what are ways that you've tried and you would like to, you know, have us chat about? send us questions, expand on our discussion in the comments below. Yeah, because those three ways are not the only ways. Definitely. Definitely. Not. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, could you do two things for me? Could you like it? And could you subscribe to our channel? Both of these things help us out tremendously. A big shout out to all of our patrons. Your continued support is amazing. And we really appreciate the encouragement to continue making these videos. If you want to become a patron, you can see the link below in the description. Catch you next time. Thanks for joining us.